السلام عليكم hello everybody today our video is about cesarean scar niche on ultrasound introduction cesarean section niche describes the presence of hypoechoic area within the myometrium in the isthmus with the discontinuation of the myometrium at the site of the previous CS uterine scar defects or scar niches are relatively common after cesarean delivery. This video aims to present different pictures of scar niches and post-vaginal birth after cesarean section findings that can be confusing. The presence of a niche in the cesarean scar in the uterus has increased. It can lead to uterine rupture in labor, dehiscence in pregnancy, and the placenta accreta in the future pregnancy, but this is not evidence-based and not even a contraindication for pregnancy. It is neither an indication of repair for the presenting patient nor an indication to screen these patients for such complications. In transvaginal ultrasound, the prevalence of niche varies between 42 and 70 percent in women with one or more previous cesarean sections. Alternative terms such as cesarean scar defect, deficient cesarean scar, scar diverticulum, scar vouch, and ismocele were reported. This is a picture of cesarean scar niche on ultrasound. Showing how to do assessment of the ismocele by cesarean scar niche index. Number one, measure the width, W. Number two, measure the depth, D. Number three, measure the RMT, which is the remaining myometrial tissue above the ismocele. Number four, measure the adjacent myometrium. Then, cesarean scar niche index is the remaining myometrial tissue divided by myometrium thickness multiplied by 10. More than 50% is low risk cesarean scar niche. Less than 50% is high risk cesarean scar niche index. A scar niche is defined as a triangular anechoic space with or without fluid at least 2 mm deep at the presumed site of the cesarean section scar. This shouldn't be confused with the cesarean section scar itself that appears as an echogenic line as the Bricium the site or similar echogenicity of the surrounding myometrium, and it is not hypoechoic unless pathological. Postmenstrual bleeding is a commonest complaint because of the retention of menstrual blood in the niche which is intermittently expelled after the majority of the menstruations has passed. This may be related to the poor contractility of the uterine muscle around the scar and the presence of fibrotic tissue below the niche, which impairs the drainage of menstrual flow. Postmenstrual bleeding is also because of the newly formed fragile vessels in the niche. This represents a rationale of the hysteroscopic resection aiming not only to facilitate the drainage of menstrual blood but also to coagulate the niche vessels and to reduce blood production in situ. Postmenstrual spotting is defined as more than two days of brownish discharge at the end of menstruation, including spotting with a total length of more than 7 days or as an intermenstrual bleeding which starts within 5 days after the end of menstruation for 2 or more days. It is more prevalent in women with a residual myometrial sickness of less than 50%. Scar ectopic pregnancy may develop in a niche. The niche shape could be semicircle triangular, droplet, inclusion cyst, circular, rectangular, or others as shown. 
these sonographic findings can be diagnosed easily by inexperienced trained eyes and may be confusing or missed. Postpartum ultrasound after vaginal birth after cesarean section is not routinely indicated unless there is active bleeding. A normal appearance after vaginal birth after cesarean section on ultrasound could be a thin hypocoque scar in an area with a small rim of fluid in the uterovesical pouch. This can be observed in case of incidental ultrasound findings after delivery and it doesn't mandate an extra management other than the routine care. When a niche penetrates to a depth of at least 50% of the myometrium or the remaining myometrial thickness is below 2.2 mm on transvaginal ultrasound, it is considered as a large niche. Hysterosalpingogram can show contrast extension and to defect in the myometrium with the ballooning of the lower uterine segment. Hysteroscopy can show a dome, bulging pouch or wedge on the anterior aspect of the lower uterine wall or cervical canal. It is important to treat symptomatic ethmocele because of the proposed postmenstrual abnormal uterine spotting, either spontaneously or after coits which disturbs the quality of cervical mucus and is harmful for sperm survival and motility, or because of a reflux to the endometrial cavity resulting in chronic endometritis, implantation failure, and pelvic pain. No surgery is required for asymptomatic women and those who have no desire to conceive. They can also use a levo nor gestural intrauterine device or combined pills or undergo a hysterectomy. The residual myometrium is a limiting factor for hysteroscopic niche resections. Most publications report a desired residual myometrium of 2 to 3 mm to avoid perforation or bladder injury.